Hello everybody, it's Van Berman here. Welcome back to another video. We're gonna be doing more uh, Steam Deck content today. So I wanted to start looking at how the games sort of run on the Steam Deck. I know that there's, there's probably lots of stuff out there in terms of you know how things work and which games do and don't based on the um, status that Steam has given them. But I decided I wanted to start at the at the bottom of the pile. So any games that I had on on my um, library that are classed as unsupported. So that could be for very actually for varying reasons like I've seen today. So I think I've got five games to go through and show you. So I've got Batman Arkham Asylum, I think. I think it's Arkham Asylum, um, whatever the first one is. The uh, Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition, the one, um, the one that released on Steam a couple of years ago. Final Fantasy VIII, Total War Shogun 2 and Final Fantasy 9 as well. So a good like selection, some stuff that's quite similar there. Um, and yeah, we'll go through. I'm going to try and install and boot up each one of those games. And we'll go through together if it works, if it doesn't work, and maybe as to why they're classified as, as unsupported or, well, or not working, so to speak. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. The so first game we're going to look at is Batman Arkham Asylum, and I do have the one after this. I think it's Arkham City or or whatever it is. So I'll, I will try this. I will try that one out separately. But um, to be honest, once you get past installing the script, and I think probably one of the one of the things to give us the first clue here is that it's trying to install uh, Microsoft DirectX for Windows. Obviously, we don't have windows on the steam deck um and there is obviously some file transfer stuff going up because i'm guessing the file or we're going to see anyway that the file paths it wants to use don't actually exist which is yeah a bit of an issue but we do seemingly get the launcher to load up which um, i then actually struggle a little bit with i think that's like part of the reoccurring thing is them all having launchers on especially ones that are on um, the playable or um, unverified ones as well. They seem, they tend to have launches that are better or worse than than others. So yeah, I tried a couple of times to play. Obviously, first time could just be an issue with uh, you know initialization. And then I think yeah, let's see, I did struggle with the touchpad to get it down. I think that's because I was casting it through to the capture card. And then this time we get a proper error a dx9 error and once again looking for um windows specific um dll's so i think probably this one needs something else in order to be able to to get it sh yeah get it working um but yeah bit of a shame not too surprising though it was down as an unsupported game so as all the rest of these are um, and then moved over to Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition, and I really hoped that this one would work, but you know we get the uh, I think I'd already gone through the ins installation actually, and I forgot to record it. But I think we get the splash screen, and then uh, yeah, and then we get a very similar kind of issue pop up as well, which um, actually I don't remember what it said, so I'm going to wait <laughs> and uh, see it turn up. But I think it's very similar to the Batman um, Arkham Asylum one. It's something to do with looking in Windows files. Uh, yeah, window, well, Windows 64, and then dump files being created. It wouldn't actually let me click off this, so I had to go in and close it down as well, unfortunately. So, yeah, next we moved on to Final Fantasy VIII. I was trying to decide which one to do next. Um, and it was a bit curious with this one, Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy IX, because they all use the same, all these very similar launchers from what I remember, um, from when Final Fantasy VII came out on PC. Now, Final Fantasy VII, by the way, is down as a playable game. And that's usually, like I say, if games have launchers, for example, that can be one of the reasons. But this one's down as fully unsupported. And it is running the Microsoft DirectX Windows as well, actually. So that's hmm, curious. Maybe that's not the exact reason for Arkham Asylum then. But in any case, um, yeah, it gives you a bit of a tip advice for games that do have launchers because, as I say, all the Final Fantasy ones do. And Final Fantasy actually did work fine, but as you're going to see, I needed to change 
the buttons, uh, the button mapping within the um, Steam settings. And actually, that's not a problem <laughs> because people have already made um, controller settings for these uh, for the, for the Final Fantasy games based on you know just using it normally. So that actually tended to work out quite well. And actually, the game did run as I would expect it to. Um, I loaded up to, obviously, right at the end of the game. I don't think there's any spoilers here. But, um, yeah, loaded right at the end of the game and then got myself into a battle, which ran at 16 FPS, although it didn't feel any different to normal. And I imagine that's probably because I'd never noticed, but that's what the battles are, are capped at, around 16 FPS. So... Yeah, there's one there for PlayStation. Lots of thumbs up and lots of hours played on it, but it just basically maps all of the keyboard uh, controls to the joystick, and everything works, yeah, as I would expect it to. I thought, you know, getting into a battle, trying out a few animations, that sort of thing, should give me a good enough idea as to if it's working properly. And it did, so, yeah, I mean, there's not much else really to say. I think you could probably, or certainly be able to play this all the way through. Like I say, you just got the... Little small caveats there to get it working properly, but yeah, that'll do you for Final Fantasy VIII. Then we move on to my favourite game, Final Fantasy IX. Uh, once again, very similar to Final Fantasy VIII, didn't work straight away out the box. Does have a launcher as well that you have to contend with that gives you um, the screen screen resolution settings, which is actually potentially quite nice, I guess, for the Steam Deck. Although I tried to change it and I hit play so that's fine it does work at least on the um sort of recommended or expected resolution so i can't have too many complaints about that and then everything ran smoothly once again um the audio was fine um able to run around with vv interact with the world go into the menus and that sort of thing i've got no reason to believe that final fantasy 9 doesn't work exactly as you would expect it to once again though you do have to go in and select a steam controller profile now i'm not sure if final fantasy 8 and final fantasy 9 are classed as unsupported just due to the fact that there's not um, an official controller configuration that it is a community one or they were both community ones but for me i think steam should be um, pushing those profiles as sort of um, verified uh, controller profiles and then you could move this up to um, playable for sure because like I say there's not really any fundamental difference between um, the Final Fantasy 7 version and 8 and 9 maybe it's just that they've had time to oh, I can say they've had time to verify but then my understanding of stuff that's unsupported is that someone has gone in and looked at it and verified it in a way and, and in verifying it said that they weren't going to, you know, that it, it just doesn't work. So, yeah, that's a bit of a of a disappointment, I guess, the fact that these aren't showing up as, as at least playable. But, yeah, as far as, for me anyway, as far as I'm concerned, they are. And last but certainly not least is Total War Shogun 2. Now, much in the same way we had with Final Fantasy 7 and, uh, sorry, Final Fantasy 8 and Final Fantasy 9, Shogun 2 is the only one of the Total War games, at least I've got in my library, that is purely classified as unsupported or not working. So the only thing I can really think of, I'm not, not sure if other Total War games had this, but there is, in fact, a uh, download plugin for uh, Adobe Flash Player, which is obviously something that's not necessarily supported nowadays. And I had wondered if that might be the reason that Shogun 2 um, wasn't working, but everything seemed to install fine. So no issue with the installation files there. Maybe, you know, they couldn't be read or something. And there are obviously a number of launchers, I guess, that um, you have to go through with Shogun 2. So you've got the uh, the mod one. You've also then got the the game as well. And then even before you get onto that, you've got all the stuff with the running it in uh, different DX... Uh, no, sorry. Um, you've got it... You've got, sorry, running it um, as the benchmark tool and the encyclopedia and everything else. And then finally, you've also got the DX9 or the DX11 uh, install. So there's a good number of potential issues there, I guess, that could come up with 
uh, Shogun Total War. So I got through the process. Everything seemed to be all right until I finally get to the DirectX selection screen. So if you click on DirectX 11, um, as you will see, it fails. It doesn't doesn't boot. Um, and that has been the case since testing this after the video as well. It just it doesn't want to boot up with, with DirectX 11. There's something there that is not compatible with Proton, I guess, in the code. But as you will see, if we go on to uh, DirectX version 9, which you know will will garnish you a bit of extra perform performance anyway, but you get less graphical options, of course. And if you yeah, and if you select DirectX 9, it will work. I'm not tested it with any of the mods, of course, because I didn't want to have that level of uh, variance. I wanted to try and keep it just very much. Does the you know does the base game work? Um, and as annoying it is to to use the trackpad and click on the launcher selection, you are able to get into Shogun 2 and you are able to use it. Um, I am using, of course, a once again a custom controller configuration from the community that works. It's a little bit different, I guess, to how I've used especially the other Total War games on the deck. And of course, that is something you could customize yourself if you wanted to. And I'm guessing you probably would want to if you were going to do a full playthrough or play it in any with, you know, any sort of vigor on, you know, through the campaign or online or any or custom battles or anything like that. But yeah, for example, it's got A as the A button as your left click. So it makes things a little bit difficult in order to be able to, yeah, use it in battles and, and whatever, especially since we've got the trackpads. But yeah, just so you know, Shogun uh, 2 works in DirectX 9 mode and also with a custom uh, control configuration as well. So yeah, I think, I don't know whether, it's certainly not unplayable, but this one is one that sort of... I think Valve obviously obviously got um, Bulletstorm right. They obviously then got um, the Batman uh, Arkham Asylum game right. They've not got, in my opinion anyway, Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy IX correct because um, they will work. They just need a, a custom controller configuration. But in the case of Shogun 2, it's difficult because one of the... You have to go for... The, for, one, for one, there's a lot of options to go through. You have to obviously um, do the extra install of Adobe Flash Player then you also can't select DirectX 11, so it almost needs a prompt ahead of time to say that the game only runs in DirectX 9, and then you need a custom controller configuration as well. I don't personally believe that having to have a, customer, a custom controller configuration should lead to a game being classed as unsupported or not working. I think, you know, that's just a par for the course, I guess, with these with these types of things. And the fact of the matter is that there are loads and loads of um, controller configurations that have been made by the community, and a lot of them are very good. In some instances, they're actually much better than ones that have been developed by, by devs. So, you know, because people generally will have played through with these uh, with these control schemes, and that's what will have worked, you know, best for them. So definitely manageable. Uh, in terms of that regard but you know look three out of five uh, i don't know how many more i've got in my library that are classified as uh, not working i think it might be another i think there might be 10 or so i'm not going to test all of them um just because some of them are like online only games and that sort of thing and and also uh, not really sort of worth making into a video um for themselves but yeah, so there will be at least, I would say, a couple more episodes on this for games that I have in my library. But generally, there's not a huge amount that are classified as uh, not working. About the same, about the, like I say, well, less than the amount that are classified as verified. So, yeah, it looks like the um, the unverified pool, when I get around to covering those type of games, will potentially be a bit more interesting because um, they should work. And I'm guessing that I'm guessing that you're going to go into them thinking that they will, and perhaps there'll be a large percentage, or there might be some shocks in there of ones that, for example, don't work properly. Um, whereas you know, seven, eight, uh, sorry, eight, Final Fantasy eight, Final Fantasy nine, and Shogun two work exactly as I would expect them to in the amount of time that I had with them. So, yeah, you know, I've, I mentioned this before in a couple more videos, a couple of other videos and my post on my YouTube channel. But if there's anything you want me to try out specifically, if I've got it, I will do. Um, I've got like 
nearly 500 or so games in my hidden list, so just because you've not seen them on my um, Steam Deck doesn't mean that I don't have them, um, so do drop me a line, if, and if I've got them, I'm more than happy to do it as and when uh, I get around to those videos, but yeah, like I say, I really wanted to start with the stuff that's unverified first, and just to see what kind of state that's in, but yeah, I think, you know, the Steam Deck sort of gets beaten over their head a little bit for the lack of compatibility with a lot of games, but it seems like even in the unsupported realm, in inverted commas, there are still quite a lot of, you still got a, you know, a decent chance potentially of it working. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video today and yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.